True. It, weather is a factor in our accidents, but I mean, you, and you can operate a motor vehicle, you can operate a motorcycle on uh, in the weather, in the rain, in the snow, yeah. anything. Yeah. The 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 question is going to be: Are you operating that as a reasonably prudent driver is in the same circumstances? You know, if you're out there hot riding in the rain, well, right. you're going to be at fault. If you're you know taking it nice and easy, and some jackass comes over and knocks you over, yeah. Well, that guy's at fault. We can still bring a claim. Now that's something an insurance company is going to bring up. So it was the weather, it was the rain. No, 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 no. It was the <laughs> reckless behavior of the at fault driver, and that's where we step in. Yeah. Yeah, you have rights. a responsibility to drive even more safely when the conditions right. are bad. Right. I just like this technology specifically for motorcycle mm -hmm. riders because it follows, like, we, we can get some data from cars, newer cars especially, right. about this kind of stuff, but if it's on your watch or your phone, it's sort of following the person. So, right. like mm -hmm. Justin said, we get a lot of motorcycle wrecks where the, I mean, the rider flies feet into the woods or wherever they are, mm -hmm. um, and they don't really remember what Ooh. happened. So if, if it can alert to first responders to where you are, that's kind of no, that is good. Cool. And I think we talk a lot about tracking as like a negative thing. Like, you know, everybody's tracking everything we right. do on our phones, but I'm happy to see this as a more positive um, result of all the tracking. Well, we're also gonna see it, you know, like in a, we get a big truck case or we get mm -hmm. even car cases, we can get black box data when we do a download of the cars. Right. So this is almost like a, we can get a download of a motorcycle because motorcycles don't have those black boxes. And I think the Kawasaki models are the only ones that have a motorcycle black box where we could actually get an expert to download that data. They're just not, they're not in Harleys. They're not in any of the, uh, the motorcycle brands. So. And it would be really awesome, not to cut you off, but um, if it does track speed, I know it, it tracks GPS. It has to be tracking speed. Oh, absolutely. Since we have to get around that motorcycle bias of proving that our riders weren't driving recklessly or sort of didn't deserve this to happen to them, because right, that's what we right, run into right. a lot. So if we can show right by that data that they weren't speeding or any of that stuff, mm -hmm. um, that would be awesome. Objective data. data. You can't, I mean, yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, and of course they have some things that still need to be figured out with this because they're having issues with extreme sports, you know, skiing or even roller coasters and stuff. They're having, mm -hmm. you know, these issues. So, you know, there's always kinks that need to be worked out with stuff like that, but I, I definitely like it. Now we, you know, in our area, we also offer accident scene management courses um, or classes, and those are offered as much as people want them, right? Yeah. We have them all the time. Most of the time we have them in the off season because people like to ride during the, the summer months, but that is something, you know, in this case, I'm not quite sure how it would have helped if, if he didn't, if he was by himself and since he got knocked unconscious, but if he was conscious, a class like that would be great because he would have some, I don't know, if he needed a tourniquet training or whatever, um, he would be able to kind of use some of that, those skills. Well, look at it this way. If, if you fall, even if, even if it does send a signal out, okay, it's gonna take first responders 15 to 20 minutes to get to you, mm -hmm. okay? And within a catastrophic motorcycle accident, if you don't take this training and you don't understand how to tie a tourniquet, how to take a helmet off, right. how to move someone, you know, seconds count. Mm -hmm. And so going back, you know, if you get our class, you're gonna learn all these things, whether you're riding alone or you're riding in a small group or a big group, right? So, and even if it does trigger, I mean, if you don't know this training, yeah. it's not gonna help you. Now, the good news is hopefully you are having, wearing an Apple watch or whatever device that, that has this kind of technology, it triggers it. It's alerting the first responders. You do take our class, you do have this training that's gonna minimize the likelihood of a fatality. Yeah. And that's our goal here. We wanna train everybody here in the community to, to get, this, get this training. And you don't have to be a biker to take it. If you just wanna get, mm -hmm. your loved one wants to get certified, come in, because sometimes people are passengers. Right. They're not riding the motorcycle, right. but they could be involved in an accident or their fellow rider could fall. And if they have that ASM training, they can jump off the bike and jump right in and help save a life. Yeah, the more I learn about the class, the more I'm like, it just, it just needs to be a requirement that when you get your license, you have to take the class, we you know, it just needs to be there. There's no risk. We we cover all the costs. I don't yeah. know why more people won't take it. Yeah. And of course, like yeah. you just said, we're trying to get it. I'll do it every weekend if everybody mm -hmm. will sign up for it. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yep. And then, you know, lastly, I was thinking about this whenever we were talking about who you would sue for what, but going back to these, these guardrails on, on the cliffs, is that ever something that you can use to fight the case? If there's, if there's that barrier, safety barrier there or not? Well, again, we'll have to investigate the, that particular stretch of road. Okay, and so that's where this data will come in because we'll know exactly where the loss, change of velocity happens. You know, mm -hmm. and we can kind of get an expert to reverse engineer that and say, this is where it happened. And then we get another engineer to say, hey, this is a faulty uh, section of the road. Yeah. And this was, was it a contractor? Was it the DOT? Who was it? Now the guardrails, that's, that's a different uh, analysis. Mm -hmm. Was there a guardrail that should have been there? 
Okay, or was the guardrail itself faulty? You know, we've we've looked at some of those cases over time. I got you. And so there's all different aspects. And so that goes back to what I was saying. If you're a single rider and you fall, it, don't, don't give up hope. And if your family, your family shouldn't give up hope. Let us investigate it. And it's it's it costs you nothing. I'll investigate it for free. We'll see. Hey, is this something we can do? But at least we can give you some closure too, and say there's not a case here. You know, it was your fault. Right. But right. either either way, it's something that needs to be looked into. Yeah. Well, because every so often you ride somewhere, and you're like, man, that's a sharp turn. They should have a rail there. And then there's enough accidents that, that happen in that one place, and then all of a sudden there is a rail there. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So I was just curious if that yeah, ever was a factor in what it, you right, guys do. Right. Because they're going to do a, the DOT will do a road study. Right. Yeah. And if, if they because they're not spending, it's a government, right? Mm -hmm. They're not going to spend money until they get the right, money. Right, and then when right. they get the money, they go, how am I going to spend it? Mm -hmm. And what gets neglected, South Carolina, our roads. Right. Mm -hmm. And along with that is the guardrails. Mm -hmm. So and it can be a nightmare for the motorcyclist. Right. We got potholes. We got the, the lack of guardrails, uh, uh, the uh, longitudinal joints where they're expanding the roads because of all our growth. All those are issues that everybody needs to be aware of and look out for. Sure. Sure. Well, any final thoughts on this? Get an Apple Watch, I guess, right? <laughs> Seriously, that's what we, we should probably get. They're give, so expensive, Justin. I know. We, we'll probably do a giveaway at Bike Week, and that's what we'll do. We'll raffle okay. off one or something like that. Because we got to, yeah, we got this needs to get out and spread the news. Hopefully, everybody watches this, subscribes to us, mm -hmm. and helps spread the word on this new technology that can save a life. Yep, and you're right. We will be at Bike Week in May over here at the Beaver Bar on Merle's Inlet. So we would love to see you. And Justin says we're going to be giving away an Apple Watch now. So I guess <laughs> that's a reason to come by, right? There we go. We will see you guys there. Of course, let us know if you need anything. If you if you have any questions, visit us online at justiceislovely.com. Also, let us know about these accident scene management classes. We would love to have you be a part of that. So, so, so important for you and your fellow riders to be prepared if something should happen. Um, you guys can visit us anywhere that you consume your social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. We're all over the place. We'd love to hear from you, and we'll see you next time. When life gets ugly, justice is lovely. The lovely When life gets ugly, justice is love.